Ayankali also Ayan Kali the 28th of August 1863 to 1941 was a social reformer who worked for the advancement of those people in the princely state of Travancore British India who were treated as untouchables His efforts influenced many changes that improved the social well-being of those people who are today often referred to as Dalits in November 1980, Indira Gandhi unveiled a statue of Ayankali at Kaudiyar Square in Tiruvananthapuram. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Background. Ayankali was born on the 28th of August 1863 in Venganur, Tiruvananthapuram, Travancore. He was the oldest of eight children born to Ayan and Mala, who were members of the Pulayar community of Untouchables. Although the family were relatively well off compared to other Pulayars, having been given five acres hectares of land by a grateful landlord, the children were encouraged to adopt the customary occupation of agriculture. Members of the Pulayar community generally were rural slaves at this time. The region in which Ayankali lived, which now forms a part of the state of Kerala, was particularly affected by social divisions during his lifetime and was described by Swami Vivekananda as a mad house of castes. The Pulayars were regarded as the lowest group of people in the kingdom and they suffered badly from oppressive discrimination, in particular from members of the powerful Nair caste. Robin Jeffrey, a professor specializing in the modern history and politics of India, quotes the wife of a Christian missionary, who wrote in 1860 of the complex social code that a Nair can approach but not touch a Nambudiri Brahmin, a Chovan must remain 36 paces off, and a Pulayan slave 96 steps distant. A Chovan must remain 12 steps away from a Nair, and a Pulayan 66 steps off, and a Parayan some distance farther still. A Syrian Christian may touch a Nair though this is not allowed in some parts of the country but the latter may not eat with each other. Pulayans and Parayars, who are the lowest of all, can approach but not touch, much less may they eat with each other. Suffering from this social injustice caused Ayankali to join with like-minded Pulayan friends. These young people gathered at the end of their workday to sing and dance to folk music that protested the situation. Some joined him in forming a group that challenged and threatened members of the upper castes whenever an opportunity arose, sometimes attacking them physically. His popularity earned him the names of Urpilai and Muthapilai. Ayankali married Chelama in 1888. The couple had seven children. Topic: Campaigning. Topic: Freedom of movement. In 1893, Ayankali, dressed to provoke in clothing traditionally associated with the Nairs, defied the social conventions that applied to lower castes and untouchables by riding on a road in a bullock cart that he had bought. Both the act of purchase and that of travelling on a road that was traditionally the preserve of the upper castes amounted to a significant challenge. In a similar act of defiance, he entered the marketplace at Nedamingad. These protests, which have been described by Nisar and Kanadasami as laying claim to the public space, strengthened resolve among others from the oppressed communities of Travancore, leading to further protest acts elsewhere, such as in Kazakutam. The outcome of continued protest marches, which sometimes turned violent and became known as Chaliar riots, was that by 1900 the Pulayars had gained the right to use most roads in the state, although they were still barred from those that led to Hindu temples. Later, in 1904, Ayankali was inspired on hearing a speech given by the reformist Ayavu Swamikal. This Hindu sannyasi of the Tamil community had been preaching the need to break down caste divisions because he thought that doing so would limit the number of people who were converting from Hinduism to Christianity. A branch of Swamikal's Brahma Nishta Matam organization was established in that year by Ayankali and some friends in Venganur. Ayankali also drew inspiration from the activities of Narayana Guru, a contemporary social reformer from the Ejava caste, although the two men differed in their philosophy and the means of turning it into reality. Narayana Guru had attempted to forge an alliance between the Ejavas and untouchable communities such as the Pulayars but there had been violent opposition to the idea from his brethren and the Pulayars remained voiceless until the emergence of Ayankali. Topic. Education Ayankali also sought to improve access to education. 
Some pulayers had access from around the mid-19th century, mostly through the activities of the Colonial Missionary Society and London Missionary Society. Conversion to Christianity was a prerequisite for attendance at such schools, and there were cases where pulayers offered to contribute to the cost of supplying teachers for them. However, Ayankali, who was illiterate, believed that education should be available to all children and this meant that government schools should allow access to untouchables. The government was already attempting to modernize its approach to social welfare in an attempt to impress on the British colonial administration that there was no need for the region to be annexed. Several public schools had been opened to untouchable communities after 1895 but the right to primary education was limited in scope. State funding of education became effective in 1904 but even after the government ordered schools to admit these untouchable people in 1907, local officials found ways to refuse it. In that year, helped by the experience gained from organizing the Brahma Nishta Madam, Ayankali founded the Sadhu Jana Paripalana Sangam SJPS Association for the Protection of the Poor which campaigned for access to schools and raised funds to set up pulayar operated schools in the interim. This attracted support from both Hindus and Christians. An attempt by Ayankali to enroll a Pulayar girl in a government school led to violent acts perpetrated by upper castes against the community and eventually to the burning down of the school building in the village of Orutambalam. His response was to organize what may have been the first strike action by agricultural workers in the region, who withdrew their labor from the fields that were owned by the upper castes until the government acceded to a complete removal of restrictions on education. Ayankali was also central to the success of the Pulayan challenge against the traditional stricture that prohibited female members of the community from clothing their upper body when in public. Caste Hindus had insisted that the custom was necessary to distinguish the lowly status of untouchable people but during the 19th century their belief had come under increasing attack from various untouchable groups and from Christian missionaries. The Channer Revolt, through which the Nadar community were able to overturn the practice insofar as it affected themselves, had happened not long before Ayankali's birth but the Pulayars remained affected by the discriminatory code until 1915-16. He started a school to teach untouchable children at Venganur. Representation Ayankali later became a member of the Assembly of Travancore, known as the Sri Mulam Popular Assembly or Praja Sabha. Ayankali died on 18 June 1941. Contribution and influence in society The historian P. Sonal Mohan has described Ayankali as the most important Dalit leader of modern Kerala. The anniversary of Ayankali's birth has been celebrated by his descendants and by special interest groups, through the efforts of people such as K. K. Balakrishnan, P. K. Chothan Master and K. P. Madhavan, the Sri Ayankali Trust was established. A life-size bronze statue of him, sculpted by Ezra David, travelled from Madras through the length of Kerala prior to being erected in Tiruvananthapuram. <laughs> 